Australian regular soldiers followed the training team and began tours of duty in Vietnam. They entered the most technologically sophisticated conflict yet seen. New American methods of killing were tested and refined for the first time in the heat of battle in Vietnam. Like toxic warfare that did not always discriminate between enemy and ally. There were two parts to the American equation for success, firepower and body counts. The Americans killed more Viet Cong but suffered many more casualties for their successes than the Australians did. We were absolutely terrified to be moving along with a large group of Americans with their rifles over their shoulders, talking, some with radios playing as they went out, and they would uh, wander off into the night and set up their ambushes or their listening patrols, and we would have to try to settle down and anxiously wait out the night with them. We continued to operate in a very stealthy manner uh, in the way that we moved through the jungle, looking for the enemy and then fighting him on our terms rather than drawing them to us as the Americans did. There was a collective sigh of relief when the Australians were given their own turf to build a task force base. And with it came a sense of independence they now had a chance to work in their own way, relying on stealthy patrolling and patience in finding and confronting the enemy. Australian soldiers dug in to what was to be their home for more than five years, the province of Phuc Thuy. I have got a story that I would like to tell. It's a tale of death and glory. can't convey the feeling of the man this tale's about he's a silent man moving up that track he's the lonely Ford Scout he's just an Aussie soldier this tale is all about he's a silent man moving up that track he's the lonely Ford Scout during their time here, Australian soldiers would adapt to the climate and the terrain and distinguish themselves in the heart of this renowned Viet Cong stronghold. The daily life was as routine as any other war. Village searches, ambushes, bunker destructions and endless, endless patrols. But the monotony was to be broken sharply, just three months into their stay. Australian troops are unwinding at the end of the day, unaware that tonight, 24 of them will be wounded. The Australian task force base is to be attacked for the first time. A fierce and bloody battle called Long Tam will follow, and these soldiers will realize that they face a committed and lethal enemy. Well, Long Tan for us really began on the, uh, the night of the 17th. Uh, in the early hours of the morning, the task force was mortared. I remember that vividly. We did not know if we are going to be attacked that night, if this was a prelude for attack, so in fact, all of a sudden, the war had come to our own home, in our own backyard, something that I had never thought would ever happen. The following day finds the Australians shaken. Before, danger had only ever existed outside the base. Troops are sent out to re-establish the protective cordon. At the same time, a welcome distraction arrives in the form of little Patty and Cole Joy. They're here to give the men their first taste of Australian entertainment. We all went down pretty excited and carrying on and 
combing our hair and all that sort of stuff so that we uh, looked good. We lined up and chatted to them, uh, and generally uh, enjoyed being near famous people. We'd experienced before that um, quite a few Australian audiences in Vietnam and they were just the best. They were terrific. As little Patty prepares for her performance, less than 500 metres away, the Viet Cong mortar position is discovered. No one is too sure of exactly what happened. The only information that was given to us was that a small group of enemy, probably 30 to 40, had mortared the base and gone. That we were to go out and see if we could locate anything further. We were going out to go and find out where Charlie's gone. We had no idea how many were out there. We thought, oh, well, this is going to be normal. He fired a few bombs, he shot at us, and now he's going to rack off. Shooting the scooters, the Yanks used to say. A lot of people, like before we went out, they knew that something was going to happen. It was just no one wanted to go out that particular day. From the first day, the first patrol in Vietnam, long before the Battle of Long Tam, Australians were acutely aware that they faced a different kind of enemy. For more than a thousand years, the Vietnamese had been forced to live under the heel of foreign invaders. In that time, they developed a repertoire of ingenious ways to combat their enemies. intrigued at one stage when moving through a very lightly forested area with a good cover of leaves on the ground that one of my soldiers started stamping his feet and he very carefully crouched down and said have a look at this and he brushed away the leaves and found a piece of wire a loop of wire in the middle and he very carefully eased it out looked underneath and then lifted off this concrete lid that had earth in the top of it and leaves over it disguise the entrance into a tunnel. They started off as a very small spider hole, just big enough for a, a person my size to get down, and then underneath the ground would be developed out into chambers and they'd have wells there, they had hospitals, they had communication centres. Uh, it was all underneath the ground and sometimes very deep. The tunnels also came in various tiers, so you might go down a tunnel that's only six feet uh, from the surface of the ground, but then you'd find a trapdoor which take you down another six feet, another trapdoor which take you down another six feet. And some of these were crisscrossed and at right angles to each other, so they went all over the place. It, it reminds me of the London Underground Railway system, uh, and you could almost say that the, um, that the Vietnamese took a, uh, a picture out of that and, and painted it in Vietnam. <laughs> 